Oops. Oh, I'm that's glad nice. there. Justin made that for us. Oh, no. yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Actually, I don't know if I played the whole thing. It's nice because uh, we don't get sued by the estate of Norman Rockwell. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> oh, look at that. There we go. Now I played the oh, whole like thing. He, oh, he incorporated some uh, some stuff into there. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Played that whole thing because I've. You know, it's, yeah. it's good. It's Paul Throat, if you went into a coma on Thursday. Mm -hmm. and you woke up this morning nothing you know, would have nothing, happened nothing has changed so well a few th small things have changed i this uh, the board changes wouldn't have warranted any news so here's here's my touch point for this mm -hmm. i recorded windows weekly today when i did this last week everything was normal we come back everything's normal. <laughs> you know there's no reason to even discuss it except that it's like 50 percent of the content i have for the show because it's all we wrote about over the past you know seven six days whatever yeah i you know at the end of the day, like kind of looking back at this, the thing that stands out the most to me is how much Microsoft was unprepared. Because we've both followed Microsoft well, for a very long time. And when was the last okay. time you remember the CEO of Microsoft tweeting out things at 3 a.m. our time, yeah. trying Not to calm too, the by waters? The way. Oh, there were other C-level executives doing the same yeah. thing. And so, then, look, this is one of those situations where the full story will come out eventually you know what i mean but but the narrative as i understood it i must have said this in your presence in the past few days because it's the big thing i went to ignite last week i talked to everybody i know from microsoft and i said to almost all of them hey this open ai thing don't you kind of feel like they're going to screw you somehow and there were every one of them was like oh yeah 100 percent." like and it felt like microsoft didn't have it was like it was like it was a one-sided deal mm -hmm. and the one thing i will say that's come out of this is it's very clear that that's not the case that microsoft in fact put controls in place to ensure that if open ai was destroyed in a nuclear blast tomorrow that they would continue forward with everything they had been doing so i unprepared i mean look the whole world was unprepared for this it was crazy um there is a, a I, I mean look i'm not an expert in this area but i feel like there's a very real legal regulatory issue with a company with investors and a company uh, an entity that owns 49 percent of the company not being apprised of this mm -hmm. uh, of this even as a possibility i mean what was this like cloak and dagger midnight thing or it wasn't midnight but midday i guess uh you know a firing of a, one of the most high profile executives in the hottest highest flying startup i i it's just unprecedented. And by the way, speaking of unprecedented, everyone, you know, this because these mm -hmm. people are like, I can't believe you write about this so much. Anymore. I don't believe there is an instance in big tech or otherwise where the CEO is suddenly fired by some board and 95 plus percent of the employees sent in a letter and said, if you don't all quit and bring him back, we're leaving. Like, I, yeah. there is no precedent for this. I, I don't think, please prove me wrong, but. I have never heard of anything like this in my life. It's incredible, hmm. right? And let's be clear, those 700 plus people, they're not hurting for jobs. Like if you have open yeah. AI on your resume right now, you will get you know, snatched you're up in, in a second. You are in. Uh, yep, there are companies, uh, well, the big ones we all know about, Google, Amazon, but Anthropic and uh, uh, and Oh, which that's others. the other crazy thing is that the board was, know, was trying to merge with them. <laughs> So what in the what? Uh, the guy who runs that company uh, isn't he? Is that Nat Freeman? No, 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 no he's no. an advisor to Mid Journey. No, who runs Anthropic? I don't even uh, know who runs Anthropic. Someone from the it might either ex Microsoft or Industry something 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 like that. Uh, I can't remember. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But are you let's find out. Right? Dario. Um, oh God, I don't even know how you pronounce his name. Amadeli. Amadi. Amadi. Oh, no, that that's not a familiar name at all. Okay, so that's not what I was thinking. Sorry. Um, anyway, it, it's, yeah, this is, look, everyone kind of compares AI to the GUI, to the internet, right? To the PC, whatever you want to say. I, it is way bigger than that. But, but here's the thing from, it's not just like tech. We think we're enthusiasts. So we look at mm -hmm. it from tech, like, oh, you can remove the background, you know, uh, it can write a story for you. It's going to lose jobs, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's, this is what's driving business. 
right now. This is yeah. the this is the stock market. This is the S and P five hundred. This is it's actually not the S and P five hundred, but it's the um, it's all the index. Uh, what do you call those things? You know more about money. Than index money. funds. Yeah, index funds. You know, right. This is where all the excitement is, right? Um, you've got these giant companies like Apple and actually Microsoft, which is kind of going gangbusters, obviously. There's not a, little, a lot of opportunity for growth usually for these guys. Mm. Not explosive growth, you know? Yeah. You see NVIDIA's thing? Let me see if I can bring this up. This is crazy. NVIDIA, right? This company. Oh, God. This, Their earnings. This, I, this luckiest of children of rich people company, you know? <laughs> no, it's crazy. They're... I mean, well, profits, whatever. Their net income, which is profit, went up 1,260%, 206% year-over-year -year increase in revenues. That They tripled their revenues. I was trying to explain this to my wife. Uh, speaking of unprecedented, this is part of it. Tri triple your revenues. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I That's crazy. And last quarter, they doubled their revenues. And we're like, this is unprecedented. Because this is what they do, Paul Thurot. Now, this isn't one of their chips, but they have these little things. Imagine this is an AI chip for a data center, and they go out to the what market and they say... What is that thing, like a Pentium 4 or something? Uh, no, this is a 6700K. Oh. I mean, it's older, but not like yeah. ancient. But anyways, they go out to these big cloud players and say, how much do you want to pay for this, Microsoft? And then they go to Google, how mm -hmm. much do you want to we pay for this? We would like to this? pay all the money for it because we want our competitors not to have it. And we know right. there's only a few of them. Yeah. So it's... Yep. unsustainable growth but whatever they're going to yes. capitalize they're going to take all that money and if so, they're smart which they are they'll reinvest it to continue that that lead gap yeah yep. and ride that we'll for see. a while i mean uh, look i think that they could have a very troubled future which is a dumb thing to say uh, uh, for a company that's well i think exploding. it's you got to qualify what is trouble like they'll have a normalization event at, at some point as other companies well, no no trouble for them could literally be they disappear like if oh. if Google, Amazon, and or Microsoft are able to replace them with their own in-house chipsets, mm -hmm. either made by, on their own or in partnership with another company like AMD. Yeah, uh, NVIDIA doesn't have any other business. You, if you look at their financials, there's a small gaming business and there's two other businesses that no one mm -hmm. remembers because they don't make anything. So this is like the, if Google lost their ad business, what would it look like? It would look like a company we don't care about anymore. And um, that's what would happen to nvidia they would become a, a graphics chipset company yep. for gaming pcs it's not a big business well don't worry they're going into the pc arm game and uh yeah, it's gonna rescue them i don't know why anyone wants to do that i just i think i think they do it because it's a side effect of the thing that they want to do yeah okay well yeah yeah okay I, I, there's definitely some virtuous cycle stuff going on I, I guess what i mean by that is the pc market itself is kind of a, a static size it's small relatively yes, small agree with that. The devices and when you look at uh, for arm to you know even become a big part of it you're gonna have a lot of lean years i mean uh, there's no way that the investments that qualcomm has made have paid off mm -hmm. so far other than microsoft's probably paying for it um you know what I mean? Like, yeah, this oh, is just yeah. an unprofitable business. But I right? think they look at probably like Intel and Qualcomm for that matter and say, ah, but we can steal part of that business. And yeah. Not necessarily so, the Qualcomm Intel is, PC. Intel is a but... limping giant. They're, they're, um, they're vulnerable. I mean, there's no oh, doubt yeah. about it. Yep. We're all vulnerable. I'm surprised AMD hasn't taken more share, frankly, but. Yeah, I give credit to AMD though. Like they're trying. I, they don't feel like they're sitting static. They just announced or just released their Threadripper stuff. Like they're, th they kind of have this like scrappy Lenovo vibe to them, where they're like, we'll just make some weird stuff and put it out there and yeah. see what happens. Yeah. So here's a little bit of fantasy for you that I think we will all enjoy, and it, we should probably agree it's never going to happen. But seriously, think about it for a second, uh, because Apple will never do this. But mm -hmm. if Apple announced we're going to license our M series chips to PC makers, mm -hmm. oh yeah, Intel and AMD would disappear. You yeah. know, like I, I'm just saying I there's i mean unless i'm missing something and maybe i am i don't know mm -hmm. but, uh i think that that would explode the arm pc market uh it will never happen to be very clear this is not what apple does but that would be amazing yeah i mean it's i don't know i, I agree with you 
the likelihood of it happening, you can't say it's 0%, but it's like yeah. half of 1% sort of thing, right? It would just be an FU from Tim Cook on his way out the door. No, like, that's, hey, that's do this, you know, literally where my head went. Like. It's like a new CEO comes in. It's like, okay, how are we going to drive growth? Well, let's just yep. destroy the PC market and start licensing this thing out. Let them build the well, software. Here, here's, your, here's your precedent. And this is only a sort of precedent, right? So two years ago, Apple introduced this do not track technology in iOS. I don't remember the exact name of it, but the idea is that anytime an app tries to track you, pops up this dialogue and it says, hey, are you gonna let them do this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. And I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but there have been stories lately that have looked at how much money companies like Facebook, especially Meta and others, TikTok I think was one, have lost because of this. And it is in the over tens of billions per year. Like it's crazy. So Apple flipped a switch. And, and when you think about it, yeah, from a marketing perspective, we're keeping our users safe. Okay, fine. Except that from a marketing perspective, they're putting Google search on their phones too. So that's yeah. kind of obviating a lot of that, but okay, whatever. That literally is just an F you to companies whose business models Tim Cook and Apple don't like. That mm -hmm. they've been really explicit about this. And that doesn't exactly exist in the PC space. I mean, honestly, PCs aren't doing much more than max or whatever so like uh, tim cook probably doesn't have that kind of hatred of those businesses or whatever but you know they suffered for many years waiting for um uh, ibm slash motorola power pc to come up with better and better chips they ran into the same problem with intel there might be a part of them institutional memory that's like you know what let's give them a little little shiv there in the side you know that's my only I mean, little sliver of hope for this happening you think I, about I, it if windows on Windows on ARM gets to a mature place. Like it's not a like it, it's not going to happen in the immediate future because Apple would much rather sell hardware because that's where they. No, I, I, of course, but uh, but imagine the ships going down. Imagine they're like, look, we we but have that is hardware, out. Brad. When you think about it, right? I mean, I, I, I the the problem is it would go into computers that would compete with the hardware they sell, and in in for in many ways for that to make any sense, and I really don't think it does. But if for it to make any sense. It would have to be an understanding in Apple at the highest level that the way forward for a PC for that business is the iPad, not the Mac. And that they would they would sort of, um, but they will never do that because the, mm -hmm. the whole pro creative market is such a big thing for them. I just don't, I just don't see it happening. But still, you have to, you have to wonder. I mean, yeah, yeah you do, just fantasize about Apple saying like, look, Dell, you can start building things with our M2 mm -hmm. chip. They would never give them their latest and greatest. That's Apple's way. No, it's like, look, you can build a Windows on ARM device, use this chip, make it work. You can't call it an M chip. You got to call it like something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The thing is, they clean I, I up. mean, this might be about to change finally, but to this day, the fastest Windows on ARM experience is virtualized on a Mac. Oh, yeah. And that makes no sense. Like that, that should be physically uh, or from a physics perspective, that should be impossible. I guess it is physically, isn't it? Physically? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we were yeah. never ones for laws of thermodynamics. <laughs> right. Anyways, we're it is Thanksgiving here in the U.S. Things. tomorrow, and I'm assuming we're probably not doing anything Friday yeah. unless Microsoft unless buys Sam Unless another Altman. explosive development. Microsoft acquires OpenAI. Yeah, yeah who, are, who are the other key partners? Like Microsoft's going to acquire Intel. Maybe that can happen over okay. the next 24 I, hours. I, uh, boy, this is the... Again, I, we could talk about this forever, but one of the many fascinating things about this open AI thing is Microsoft just acquired Activision Blizzard, right? It's biggest corporate acquisition ever. One of the biggest acquisitions ever. The heaviest regulatory scrutiny, I believe, of any deal that's been passed. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it was crazy how long it took. I don't know why they stuck with it, but they did. They could not buy open AI or Intel or any of these companies if they wanted to. They, they, that would be a non-starter from day one. But had that whole thing imploded, had Sam Altman and the other Greg or whatever come over to Microsoft, had 90 something percent of their employees also joined of their own volition without any marketing by Microsoft, that would have been completely legal. And that would have put it through like that. That is astonishing. You know, it all, it was like this close to, it, it could have happened. I keep doing this today. I don't know why. Have a good Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.